Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara's in the background somewhere. Hi! And today we're going to go over a few knives. Most of them I do have reviews on, but we're going to start off with the Spyderco Shaman. Now I did modify this knife and I got some red micarta scales on my S35 V, or I'm sorry, S30V version of the Spider Crow Shaman. Now, I love the Shaman, and I didn't have any problems with it for a long time. I mean, this is an incredible, incredible work knife. And it was always super solid and super fidgety, had no problems, um, you know, shutting it, just letting it fall shut. Then out of nowhere, I started getting a little bit of play in my pivot. And it seemed like no matter what I did, trying to adjust it and make it work, it just would not tighten. So recently, I took it back apart once again. And I got it tight to where there was no play in the pivot, none at all. But it was just seriously so tight, um, meaning when I tried to drop it, it just would not drop shut. I'd basically have to close it with two hands. Then, you know, I just kept adjusting and kept working it, and I got it pretty good now. I, get, I got it to where it's still a little tight, but I can slap it shut. So I'm pretty happy with it. There's maybe a smidgen of play inside the pivot if I really want to, you know, squeeze it. But it's still very, very strong. And because of the locking mechanism, that little bit of play is not going to affect the strength of the lock. So it's still incredibly reliable. But, you know, it's just something too when you have an expensive knife like this. You don't want no play in the pivot. And in this case, if somebody just grabbed it, they probably wouldn't think it has play. I guess it depends on, you know, how good you are at telling, but you know, I'm pretty happy with it now. You know, I'm back to where I would carry it again because I stopped carrying it for a little bit because of that little bit of play. Next knife. Now, these knives haven't dropped yet, but they will be dropping in just a few days. The Button Lock Elementum, the large version of the Elementum. Now, why am I talking about these? I just did a review on this. Well, one, I want to talk about it because I want to talk about the differences between these two. Since I have two of them, are there any differences? You know, because when you get one, you know, you base everything off of that one. When you get another, are there any differences? And yes, I did actually find a couple differences. Um, one, it's actually just in one part, and it's the button. So the button on the original one I had is better than my new one and you know better in my opinion somebody else could grab it and say no i like this one better and basically it's just in the closed position when it's in the closed position it doesn't feel like the button has much room to push in because in order to open up the button lock elementum you can't just pull it open it's locked when it's shut you have to push this button to let the blade fly out and then let go of the button when it you know when it's opened up to make it lock again with my original one pushing it it has a lot of button like there's there's a good amount of spring to the button when i push it so you know, maybe it's just that this one's broken in a lot more and the the um the lock has had time to work its way into place and that's all it is. It just needs to be fidgeted with because remember this one's new, this one the other one's been fidgeted with a lot. The new one hasn't. So maybe I just need to play with it a little bit, but I am gonna give one of these away. Um I'll probably give the original one away, especially because of that button thing. But you know, I also have the smaller elementum already in, in this brown micarta. So, but the little difference that it does have isn't that big of a deal. It doesn't affect how good it is or anything like that, but I can feel it. I can really feel it in the button when I'm doing it. And I can tell I do like the original one, the one I'm probably going to give away a little bit more and i'm not just saying that i'm serious if anybody grabbed these they would know what i mean with the button i thought about actually sending it back and asking them to adjust it or something but i think it'll work itself out after just playing with it a little bit you know maybe it just needs to break in a little bit next thing is actually not a knife where is it 
It's actually this Viking strop I got. Now, originally I was putting my DMT diamond spray on the surface of this. I have my Venive diamond compounds um, that I put on my strops, and then I have the DMT diamond spray. I have other compounds too, but those are the ones I've been using at most recently. And, you know, if you don't know, you use your strop, you get it out, and you basically go backwards rubbing your edge on the strop to tune it up to basically keep it nice and sharp, you know, through daily use. Or after you're done sharpening, you can use it to help remove a burr. But this one's a very dense. Um, it's some of the hardest leather I've ever bought for a strop. Now, it does have a slick side, which I don't really use. I might start using here soon because what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm taking some sandpaper and this sandpaper is 214 grit. Is it 214 grit? It's grade P, so it is waterproof and everything, but I'm going to rub the surface down and I've been doing that basically to kind of fluff the leather up. And it seems like it's working really good because I wasn't happy with it originally. Uh, because of how dense it is. But after sanding it down really good, um, it seems like it's working a lot better. So if you guys have any straps where some people really like the dense leather, I'm more, I like the furry leather a little bit better. So, you know, just a tip, you can always sand your leather down a little bit and give it a little bit of a different finish. If it's, you know, even if you've used it so much and it's glazing over where there's just just so much steel and compound on there that it's became useless. I don't know about useless, but you know, you know what I mean, where it's just dense and built up with debris or steel and compounds. Sand that layer off, get it back to nice and fresh, put a new a layer of compound on there. It'll work really good. Now, bringing back the knife I was just check um I just pulled out. This is a neck knife. And this one's designed by Mike Emler. This is the Artisan Sea Snake. Awesome little knife. Now, I was kind of worried about the AARPM9 steel. Um, the AA, sorry, I always say it wrong. ARRPM9 steel. So I was a little bit worried about it at first. Actually, originally, I loved it. Then, um, you know, after trying a few different examples, you know, I noticed a little bit of differences. But after putting another edge on um, this uh, this artisan sea snake, I think maybe possibly it's starting to get into some really good steel. I'm not quite sure yet, but either way, regardless, the steel is still pretty good for the $50 value especially on this knife this is an incredible little work knife i've used this so much at work and it's like a little claw it's almost like an extension to your finger if you're looking for a utility blade or a pocket knife or a neck knife to act as a utility blade for a worker this is great now it is very thin and compact so you're not going to have the best ergos in the world but you still lock in really good so i definitely can recommend this knife highly and i think possibly um you know, through watching other people's testings of this new steel, that it's going to be a good steel all in all. You know, maybe they just needed to, to work with it, you know, a little bit at the beginning. Or, you know, maybe it was us. Maybe it was us users. Um, I don't know, you know, but it seems like it's, it's going to work out pretty good. Next, I want to talk about this little mini sheepdog. Now, this guy's up for sharpening here, so uh, Kara's been, uh, and she's hard on her knives, guys. You guys think I'm hard on my knives? Holy cow. <laughs> Every day, Kara comes home, and I always check her knife because I already know. Um, you know, I basically do all the maintenance on the knives. She doesn't even wipe the damn thing off. Not true. Yes, it's very true. She'll come home with and she'll come home with who knows what all over the blade so 
I tend to clean it off and make sure it's, you know, good for her to bring back to work the next day. And her edges, man, they'll come back and I can just tell she's been using it really good, which I love. I think that's amazing. Um, so this one's, it's about time. I personally, I've only carried and used it. Well, besides for the review, like since the review, I've carried and used it twice, maybe since the review. Um, but it seems like that edge has held up really good. I mean, now it's rolled a little bit, but um, and I'm not going to worry about stropping it out. I'm just going to give it a fresh edge. But all in all, I haven't done a review. Oh, no, I never did a review on this. I was going to do a review. What I did was I did an impressions on it. And then uh, I never did a review because why didn't I do a review? I don't know. Maybe you guys didn't want it or something. I don't remember. But maybe I should do a review on it. But since that first impressions video, I've carried it a couple times. And yeah, it's about ready for a fresh edge. But I think this is a better version of the Sheepdog. It's nice, compact. You can get a full grip on it, unlike the one with the flipper tab where you were basically only going to get three fingers on the knife. The action is so good on this thing. I mean, whether you're using a reverse flick or a thumb flick, I'm surprised more people aren't screaming about this knife. Now, I would love to see a full-size version of this. Um, I've had the full-size version Sheepdog, the flipper, but man... This thing in a full size version with the hole, it'd be amazing with the with the uh, the micarta because Kaiser's got some really good micarta, really good micarta. Now speaking of another non flipper, the Hinder three inch non flipper. This thing is so good, so good. The detent is so well tuned. And from everybody that I've heard from, it's basically everybody's favorite version. I've yet to have heard somebody who says, I like the flipper version better than the non-flipper version. The detent is just better tuned. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like the flipper version. Um, my full size one is a flipper version. The XM24 is a flipper version, which I don't want to change at all. I love the way they are. Wouldn't have them any other way. But man, these little three inches, it just, it's the three inch the flipper tab kind of pushes you down. Now you can still get a full grip, but you feel like you're far away from the blade. Maybe it's just me because I have a, we have the finger trail one. Um, but you know, for Kara, you know, having smaller hands is perfect for her. And I can use this little choil and it works really good. I mean, I like the knife a lot, but an improvement of a knife you like very much, the Hinder three inch non flipper. This thing is so good. The ergos are so good. And, because you know, the clip is like the perfect clip. And this is actually the knife. I've been carrying this thing a lot because um, it fits so good in my new, uh, that leather, was it Real Man Real Leather? Uh, my little EDC uh, belt pouch or EDC uh, carry leather pouch thing that I carry on my belt, <laughs> whatever you call it, real man, real leather. I think that's what it's called. I've been carrying the heck out of that thing. And this knife seems to fit perfect. Now I am switching it up and using other knives to make sure, uh, I want what in the review, I want to make sure I tell what knives fit best in it, but yeah, the hinder three inch, I can't recommend it enough for somebody who wants a really tough good three inch knife can't go wrong with the hinder three inch non-flipper the action from the detent detent is well tuned you can reverse flick it very easy the lock bar is easy to access it's nice and comfortable in the hand it carries really good and it's a it's a tough knife man it's got the titanium liner underneath for i got the the, the burgundy micarta scales or well, i think they're called bird i don't know they're my card though, but underneath it has a titanium liner, so it's extra strong and very reliable. This one is on the triway pivot, but I wouldn't take it off the bearings. I love the bearings on this. So that's the video, guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.